They claimed to be impressed, but I'm not sure that's what they were really feeling. Hello, friend, and welcome back to my studio. It's that time of year again. I'm on a job hunt. With a combination of life circumstances and personal choices, springtime has become my typical time for changing employment. With jobs heavily on my mind, today I'd like to share the story of my first job and how it went. I can tell you honestly that I've accidentally always kept things interesting and my first job is no exception. But first, what are you even doing, Julia? Today, I am finishing, woohoo, this painting. I finished the macrame, go over the legs, and sign my piece today. Now, back to the story. Flashback to the early months of 2015 in North Dakota. I had a brand new driver's license, and the whole world was open up to me now. Unfortunately, the whole world looked a lot like a main street of shabby old buildings, two crossroads of newly developed businesses, and a whole lot of open farmland. My whole world consisted of my parents' house, the church we went to weekly a few miles down the freeway, and my high school that was a five-minute drive away, practically in my backyard. I was eager to get out of Dodge, so to speak, as we had only moved there a year and a half ago, and I'd already changed schools. I didn't feel like I fit in very well. Picture a shy, artsy, and extremely religious young girl who asked people not to swear around her and participated in theater for the social element. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts vibe, but the she is wearing black leggings and an NDSU hoodie, and I thought leggings were immodest and hated NDSU, so I wore Hollister jeans ripped at both knees from use, and black Hot Topic tees covered in cat hair. This is 2015 Hot Topic, mind you. I favored Pixar movie and pop punk band t-shirts. At lunch, I memorized scriptures, and throughout the day, I wrote bullet points in my planner of subjects to tell my mom about. Anyway, you get the picture. I felt out of place, in my very DNA. Well, despite my hatred for the local college, my dad worked there and had just started assisting in some study abroad programs. They've since changed policies, but back in 2015, he had the opportunity to take someone with him for the cost of basically the plane tickets. He invited me to come along with him for his next study abroad to Europe in June and July and I had never wanted something so desperately. He was generous and made the deal with me that he would cover all expenses, but if I wanted to buy souvenirs, I would have to use my own money. I was ecstatic. Not only leaving North Dakota, but going to Europe? We had plans to visit 13 countries in a few week long trip, and I couldn't get my head out of my daydreams. Freshly bestowed the legal power to drive, I went off on a job hunt for the first time. I don't remember where all I applied to, but I do know that the first place I heard back from was Target. I had applied to be a cashier at $10.50 an hour. Our community had a weird inflation in wages because of the amount of families in the area for oil and the lack of work-aged young adults to do the less career-type jobs like fast food and cashiering. So 1050, given the year and area, was a definitely decent wage. I showed up for training with a room full of other new hires. We all watched videos about not stealing and how to bag fresh produce and where to clock in. Then we were given lanyards and employee numbers and put on the schedule. I went with my mom to pick out khakis I didn't loathe and a few cute red shirts, and I was ready for my first day on the job. You know those first day nerves? Remember your first ever job uniform and how strange it felt to wear it? I was full of those nerves and discomfort as I walked into Target that first day. I made my way to the back and I clocked in, then looked at the schedule, only to realize I was a week early. I wasn't supposed to be there until the next Tuesday, but I had already clocked in so I went and found a supervisor, and they decided to just work with me instead of making me go home. Because of this mix-up, I'm not entirely sure if my training would have been more comprehensive without it, or if I really got all the training they give. 
I shadowed a cashier for most of a shift, learning about how to cash checks and count the money at the end of the day, and before the day was through, they had me check out a few customers. My next shift, a week later, I was told just to sign in and start going, and I never received more training than that. Being the uncomfortable in my skin 15-year-old I was, every second of talking to strangers was exhausting agony. I got really good at efficiently scanning items, and my lines moved quickly. I took pride in my Tetris-like bagging that I could do with speed and grace. But I never once talked to one of my coworkers unless I had a question. I would sit in silence on my phone in the break room, dreading the ticking clock. In about a month, my feet were sore enough that I had to get new shoes. My shoes were great running shoes, but I wasn't running. I was standing. I still think cashiers should have chairs, they do that in Europe. But overall, I felt like I was good at my job and I was happy to be making income. I spent far too much of my paycheck on food from the Starbucks I stood next to and could smell all day long. As a religious non-coffee drinker, I loved getting a strawberries and cream iced drink and a bagel. If I was feeling more frugal, I would pick up a naked smoothie instead but that took more time, and my 15-minute breaks were already too short. Still, I was pocketing some good money for my trip. After a month or two, I grew quite bored of the job. I know, it's not even that long, but I tried to shake it up where I could. Being the cringy theater kid that I was, sometimes I'd throw on a British accent and check people out that way. I could usually limit my talking enough, so no one questioned it, But once I did encounter someone from England and they wanted to know which area I was from. Making up an area I was pretty sure existed, I tried to check them out quicker so I could end the interaction, but they had a full cart and before I was done, I gave up the bit and admitted I had just faked the accent for variety. They claimed to be impressed, but I'm really not sure that's what they were feeling. It's hard for me to even write how embarrassing it was, but... You know, I was trying my best. I got a lot of older white dads who saw my name was Julia and called me Julia Gulia. Then they'd ask me if I was even old enough to have seen The Wedding Singer. I was, and I pretended it was funny because they seemed happy. Once, I got stuck in a lane with a broken card reader and I was working a full 10-hour shift. A few hours in, I got pretty tired of saying the chip reader doesn't work, try swiping, and so I doodled a little octopus with a hat and wrote something along the lines of the chip reader doesn't work, try swiping. I might have checked out two customers before a shift leader came over and removed it, telling me Target doesn't allow custom notes like that. And it does make sense, but she was honestly pretty mean about it, and I felt sick with shame the rest of the day. Well, I was fully ready to stay at the job until my trip, after which I would quit and just have school, church, and theater again. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your view, that plan got derailed. Around March of 2015, I got vertigo for the first time. I don't have very many clear memories throughout this illness. This time is jumbled in my mind. Vertigo at least my vertigo, is caused by tiny little crystals in the inner ear jamming or otherwise getting out of place. Because of those tiny, tiny little ear crystals, my whole world was constantly tilting. I would say spinning, but it's not like the dizzy you get after spinning around in a chair. It's more like reality is on some axis and it's unanchored and it floats and tilts and seems to tilt downward endlessly. This feeling overwhelmed me in every waking hour. It didn't matter if I had my eyes open or not, I could always feel the tilt and gravity pull the wrong direction. I was walking through the hallways in my own house with my hand on the wall. I was crawling down the stairs. I was permanently planted on the couch in the living room just so I could get food every few hours. I lost weight. My mom took me to the doctor, and they gave me a medication for basically car sickness. It helped with the nausea, but it did not make the world solid. And now, I'd like to provide a trigger warning for self-harm and suicidal ideation. Please skip to the timestamp to avoid this content. Because 
this was the first time in my life that I took measures to try to stop being alive. It wasn't a focused effort. I wasn't determined to do this like later attempts were, but I could not handle the endless agony of this vertigo void, and I could not picture my life without it. I became reckless in medications. I took too many and combined a lot, and every time I would lie down on the couch and just hope to drift away from this existence. I'm absolutely sure that my reckless pill taking only made my agonies worse, and thankfully, nothing serious ever came from it. My parents didn't even know I did this at the time. I did tell my mom later when it was once again a relevant topic. But, After weeks, I was finally sent to a specialist who performed some kind of magic head-turning physical therapy, and the problematic crystal was dislodged. It happened rather suddenly. I took a walk around the hallways with the doctor before and after, and the difference was remarkable. I still felt a little shaky, a little soft, but I could walk forward without help again. Slowly, slowly... I returned to my life before this illness. So, how is this about my first job? Well, this was the first time I learned that jobs like cashiering will really treat you poorly when you aren't providing them immediate value. As soon as I got sick, I called in and let my managers know. Their policy was to call in exactly four hours before each shift if you aren't going to make it to that particular shift. I never got any manager's personal phone numbers, so I would call Target's customer support, wait for someone to answer, explain that I'm an employee, and then they'd transfer me to a shift lead, and then the lead would try to convince me to come in anyway. As I learned that my illness was vertigo and not going away anytime soon, I got really frustrated with their system. I was floating in a timeless, dark world without rhyme or reason, and they could not accept that I would be sick for the next shift too. I had to call in for each shift, each time. Well, I think it's pretty clear that at my worst points of my illness, I was simply unable to call them. So I stopped altogether. I never formally quit but they never even called me once, and I stopped calling them. The breakup seemed to be mutual. For the rest of my high school years, every time I passed a target, I would feel shame for how it ended. I really was a good employee, never missed a shift before the vertigo, always clocked in and out on time, customers liked my quiet but friendly pace of checking them out. I still feel embittered that they extended no understanding towards my illness, and I avoided going into the Target for fear of recognizing someone for the next three years of high school. Today, I am very efficient at packing my own bags in self-checkouts and eternally sympathetic to the cashiers I see. I also look for jobs now that care about the skills I bring to it and would care if I effectively disappeared. I did not make my goal amount for souvenirs in Europe, but... I had a blast anyway, and learned so much more about the world and my place in it. I think everyone's first job is at least a little crappy, so I hold no grudge further than the dumb system they had. I still hate the combination of khakis and a red shirt, but I hated that before too. It's just not a good look for anyone. That's really the end of the story, and in the end, a job gained is a job lost, and cashiers deserve chairs. That's all for this one. I'll see you next time, friend. Bye. If you'd like to see more of my work, here's my website, here's my Patreon, and here's a shirt I made. Cool, right?